Welcome to episode nine in September, where I practice my habit to do my best. September's habit is do our best. September's color is award gold. Our goal for September is to pick a task, even a small one, and give it all you got. The best you can do is the best you can do, and that should be sufficient. Do your best. We've all heard that, and some of us have taken it as a challenge, while others have resisted it because it smacks too much of competition, one against the other. But actually, if we go back to the ancient Greek, the original meaning of the word compete was to strive together. So in the original Greek Olympics, the purpose wasn't to defeat the other competitors, but to use them as pace cars to help us do our personal best. The concept of all of us striving together is the ultimate win-win-win. When you do your best, you hurt or hinder no one, and it may inspire others to do their best as well. Talk about intentional mutual benefit. Hi, I'm Steve Behrman, and welcome to September's Step Along the 12-Step Habits Path, where we focus on excellence and doing our best at the tasks that come our way. September is a seasonal transition month, a good time for taking the time to re-energize, recommit ourselves to excellence. No matter how seemingly menial the task is, our higher power is asking us to lovingly give each task our full attention and devotion. Mahatma Gandhi, of course, the celebrated leader who was striving for peaceful change, he had a lot of big agendas, but he had a small agenda too. He was known to maintain his own personal balance with daily spinning of thread. He spun every day for at least an hour and encouraged everybody to spin thread daily. We're not talking about spin doctors here, we're talking about actual thread. Gandhi elevated spinning to focus meditation so that a simple task done daily becomes a pathway to spiritual awareness and to excellence. Now our civilization is so focused on external achievement, fame, fortune, and power, that we forget that the real things we use every day and enjoy in life are brought to us by a series of simple tasks that are done well. Well, as you learned in our introductory episode to the 12 Habits as the Path to Mutual Enlightenment, this path is a new way to actually put our desire for unity and intentional evolution into real practices. We can grow spiritually while at the same time putting them into practice in real life we achieve what Bruce Lipton calls heaven on earth and why he endorses the 12 habits path. And as we know, if best way to get to heaven is to begin there and by practicing the 12 habits path on a daily basis, we bring heaven to earth every day. These 12 habits are the most enjoyable way the Swami and I have found to put evolution into practice by doing it together coherently one month at a time. And now I'd like to introduce my cohort in this webinar, the creator of the 12 Habits Path, the Intentional Evolution, Elaine Park. Welcome, Elaine. Thank you, Steve, for that great introduction to do your best in September. And thank you, Elaine. I see the color for do your best in September is award gold. Can you tell us about the choice of September for your do your best and the color? Well, we chose September for do your best because you're kind of coming off the summer months again in the northern hemisphere uh, we're talking about the northern hemisphere here so it's getting a little bit cooler and that energy starts to come that energy that can energize kids starting back to school um, perhaps you've been on vacation from your work and you've got that project at, at your work that you want to, or something you want to do better or get better at or the project at home. So September seems, again, it's a transition period. So why not kind of give a real kick to that last, the first of the last three months of the year and, and make it the month to do your best. You know, autumn is coming in. Uh, think of the beautiful, the green of the leaves around you are turning to golds and the other colors. And so it's a, it's a beautiful time of year to feel the energy of the temperatures coming down and to, and to put that energy into making a commitment to perhaps do your best at something that matters to you, either at work or at school or at home. Um, gold sort of 
has become the standard for do your best and for excellence. You know, the gold medals at the Olympics, uh, the golden rule. The golden rule is the number one standard for how to be the kind of person that's going to get along with others and make this planet work and are going to have a happy life. Uh, the golden rule is better than the rule of gold, which is what we seem to be living in a lot today. So I think that gold is an excellent color for do your best. Um, and I think it's something that we all want to strive for every day. You know, Steve, everything that has to do with do your best in the month of September, I've heard you and the Swami talking about for a long time. You call it join the uprising. You want to tell us a little bit about that? You know, traditionally, when people were uh, upset and wanting a political change, there would be a revolutionary uprising to overthrow the system. Well, now what is required, uh, and what that means is that we basically stay on the same, on the same wheel. Revolution, the wheel keeps turning and nothing really changes. So this is an evolutionary upwising to overgrow the system, to become bigger than what is out there right now. Uh, and uh, the Swami and I have come up with a four-step program, which of course is uh, guaranteed to work three times faster than 12-step. And the steps are wake up, wise up, grow up, and show up. And they're all about doing your best as they focus on the genuine who, who you really are. You wake up to the illusion of separation that has kept us apart, that has kept us on this wheel. You wise up to the power of love, coherence, and unity, which is what the 12 habits are about. You grow up to be the you you are meant to be, being totally yourself, doing the work that only you can do. And finally, to show up on a new playing field, ready to play a new game. Intentional mutual benefit, thrival for each and all. I've called this the upwising. It's a spiritual version of doing your best because doing your best is about upwising. It's not about uprising. It's connecting ourselves to the universal wisdom that brings out our best from the spiritual to the physical realms, okay? So do your best is uh, in the past, we've imagined, well, that means do a good job at what you're doing. Well, you know, it's not just about the tasks, but it's really about applying doing your best to the spiritual path, to becoming at one with the wisdom of the larger universe and, and then acting from that space. So doing your best is not just about the tasks, it's about your purpose. It's about your interaction and interfaces to choose the wolf of love and consciously bringing this awareness to the real world. I just really love your description and the distinction you make when you speak of upwising, which means getting in touch with the wisdom that comes to us only through the universe. One of the things that I'll share with everyone is that for many years, ever since I was quite young, actually, I've wondered, you know, who am I? What is? And I've done many years of studying uh, religions and science and philosophy and, you know, like, what is? And all the while that I was doing this, um, I kept a little paper where I would say God is. And then I would, whatever my understanding of God at that point in time, 10 or 20 years ago, I would write it down. And I wish I had those old versions, but I don't. But I do have what my definition of God is today as we are talking here back and forth. And it ties very much in with your point about upwising. So my definition of God is, God is the great divine intention, spiraling love energy that is resonating harmony within each of us and within everything right now. Actually, harmony and wisdom are synonyms because it is in the wisdom that we speak of when we think of one consciousness. The wisdom is coming out of the universe. And I feel like 
in our world, we don't often define what we mean when we say we're in one consciousness. And I think when we say we're in one consciousness, it's when we're resonating harmony. And remember, harmony is not perfect. It's just that it's moving in, in a path that has order to it. And while it might not be perfect at one point or another, it's going to move and spiral and circle. And so to me, wisdom, as opposed to intelligence, wisdom comes from the universe. Thanks for that distinction, Elaine. You know, uh, the whole idea that there's so much focus now on artificial intelligence, and I'm thinking, you know, we need some real intelligence. We need the intelligence of nature, which is a vibration and reflection of this greater intelligence of the universe, and accessing that, as you said, is wisdom. Uh, Swami says there's no harm in harmony and no sin in synergy, and I agree. So I want to go back to something that you said uh, that I think I mentioned it earlier, but it, uh, it relates to the Olympics. And as I said in the introduction, we use the word competition, the Greek definition of competition means to essentially reach higher, reach higher uh, for ourselves, not in uh, trying to defeat other people, but to be the best we can possibly be. Um, one of my spiritual paths over my lifetime has been baseball. I've been a great, great baseball fan. And in 1980, I was uh, doing a magazine called Pathways in Ann Arbor, Michigan. And that was the year that a pitcher named Steve Stone had a career year. He won the Cy Young Award for his league, which is the greatest award a pitcher can win. And I had read somewhere that he was using some um, mindfulness techniques in order to focus his awareness. And I was curious about it. And so I saw he was coming to pitch at Tiger Stadium. Uh, and so I got in touch with the Tigers uh, PR guy and he arranged an interview. And so when I interviewed Steve Stone, I asked him, what was it? this year that made the difference because he had been a major league pitcher which we have to be pretty good to be a major league pitcher but never at the level of excellence never the star he was just kind of an also ran and he told me something very interesting he said you know i made a decision at that point to reach higher i made a decision that all of this skill all of the talent that i've been given all of the opportunity i was not making the most of it I was kind of sliding along. And so this was the year that he decided he was going to make the biggest difference. And it really, really showed. He was cultivating excellence to do his best ever. And as some wise person once said, excellence is not a skill, it's an attitude. You know, I, in working on this month, I was reminded on the, of a quote. Quote, when you are, what you are is God's gift to you, what you become is your gift to God. So we can modify this bit for do your best to what you've been given, uh, the, the gifts that you've been given are given to you so that you can then do your best in taking all your talents, your passions, your skills, and your interests and giving them fully and freely all out. We've talked about having your attention out as opposed to having your attention in. When you have your intention in, you're self-conscious either about grandiosity or inferiority, right? But having your intention out allows you to be out there in the world paying attention so that you can actually see what's going on and you can be of service. So do your best is your gift to the world using your God-given gifts. So. If we, this is a way that we can weave what the Swami would call a web of mass construction. So Elaine, in this month of September, how do we build this attitude of excellence? Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Steve, because this is actually, do your best, uh, is a good chance for me to talk about the importance of habits themselves in terms of doing your best. You know, you were talking about the ancient Greeks. You know, Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an art, but, an, but a habit. Your baseball story is a very good example of that. So we are what we, we repeatedly do. Now I've looked 
at many, many books, self-help books over the years. And I would say there's hundreds and hundreds of self-help books that say that they're book about habits. Uh, Stephen Covey's, Covey's book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. One of my favorites is 101 Ways to Simplify Life. I mean, if you have to figure out 101 ways to do anything, it doesn't sound like it's gonna be very simple to me. That's just my point of view. But the point is that these books that say they're about habits, they are about habits. And they mention and they describe these this list of whatever it is that they want you to do as habits. But they don't help you make habits out of those points. Stephen Covey's seven points, seven habits, they're just a list unless somehow you do them every day and bring them into your life and make it a part of your daily routine. So the difference between other books about habits and the 12 Habits for Unity is that, is that they are about habits. The 12 Habits for Unity is a habit-forming book. So even though there's an introduction in the beginning, basically there are 365 half-page readings and each month, all of those daily readings are sort of a little different insight about whatever that month's habit is. So if you spend a minute just reading that one half page on that focus for that month, you are going to get better at whatever that habit is. In this month, the habit is do your best. So you're going to get better at doing your best. So the difference between other books on habits is that they are about habits. This is a habit forming book that's going to help you make habits out of these 12 golden aspects of leading a better, happier life, uh, about coming together with our peer participants and creating resonance in the universe, about each of the focused elements of harmony and getting along better that we've been talking about. You know, this is where the rubber hits the road. We are making habits out of the things that matter in life and asking our peer participants to do the same. There is one other thing I want to add. It's a it's a story from from one of the schools, just a small story, but it was during the month of September and there was a youngster in the school who was on probation, an adjudic adjudicated kid, and he comes into the school office carrying a wallet that he's found. And you know, the school administrator is like kind of amazed that this young kid has brought this wallet into the school and returned it. And so the the principal said, you know, like, wow, thank you so much for bringing this, this wallet back. Why did you do it? And it was the month of September. And this young kid said, it's because this is the month for September. Do your best. And I figured I'd do my best and bring the wallet back. So that's a great story from one of the schools in our program. Wow. I love that story. You know, it's not that often that we can make an actual connection between a philosophical distinction, an idea, and something that manifests in real life. Clearly, that individual understood that doing their best uh, wasn't necessarily about getting an A, but it was about doing the right thing. Very important. So given how uh, doing your best makes such a difference in connecting uh, our inner aspirations and outer manifestations, what, Elaine, uh, do you think is in the way for most people of uh, doing our best? There are many things that keep us from doing our best. Probably the most common is procrastination. We just don't seem to get around to what it is that we really want to do to do our best. Or we procrastinate so there's not enough time to do our best. You know, that's a, that's a really important aspect of doing your best. Another one is something we talked about earlier, the, the, the fact of self-doubt. Um, there's such a thing as an aversion to success, people who are averse to being successful, which means they have so such a low level of self-esteem, such a low sense of self-worth that they are actually afraid to try to succeed. Instead, they, they don't try to succeed because they are they don't want to risk how bad they might feel if they fail. They're afraid of failure. There's another thing that I think matters a lot in this. It's called we call it with him. What's in it for me? Rather than thinking about being outbound and putting yourself out, 
people are thinking about what's in something for themselves, which may make them less, you know, they don't really care. Just put in the time, get the job done, uh, get my paycheck. Um, they're not really thinking about the, themselves as a human being capable of putting excellence into every move that they make with their hands, if their job is that kind of a hand, uh, uh, that kind of a job. So that I think that's another thing that keeps people from doing their best. You know, we don't want to have the world's best crooks. As you said, someone's values, doing the right thing is critical to doing your best. So I think that if we think in terms of overcoming these obstacles, if we look at the entire year of the 12 Habits of Unity as a contextual format, that's sort of an organic, it's organic, they all work together. February in the habits is you count. So that's the month where you work on self-esteem. So when you get around to do your best in September, perhaps your esteem has risen enough that you're no longer afraid of doing your best. So that's why the 12 habits all work together organically um, to make lives better for those of us who are working on this path and for our ability to make life better for everybody else. As I've mentioned earlier, we often associate doing our best with external achievement that results in fame, fortune, and power. We tend to default to money and power uh, because these are the rules uh, that are at the center of our society, spoken or unspoken. When we think about achievement, when we think about doing our best, we think about fortune, fame, and power, these forms of achievement. And in this society, that seems to be what's glorified. The people who do their work every day that provide the things that, that we use on a daily basis, they're kind of the unsung heroes. And yet, it's the unsung things that happen every day. The people that pick up our trash, the people that deliver our food, the people who repair our AT&T phones, um, all of these are functions that keep the whole world going and we want to make sure that people do their best at this uh, we want to make sure that all of the air traffic controllers out there do their best in making <laughs> in making sure that everybody is safe and even though we're not going to see their names when when they run the proverbial credits this is really something that keeps the better part of the world turning and so one of the ways once again to do your best is to notice if we have your attention in on the self-centered ego uh, versus out, whether you have your attention out there to see how you can be of most help to people. Uh, also, the other way that's very important in, in doing your best is to not be in competition with other people and particularly not be judgmental about other people. You know, it's obvious that when we do our best, isn't it so that we're less concerned about judging other people? So uh, what I have found is every time I find myself judging somebody else, I recognize that's a reverberation of self-judgment. It's really a critique of, of who I am. Uh, and speaking of reverberation, what I notice is the more I apply the 12 habits, the more I see that they're fractal. In other words, there is a vibration that follows itself through every one of these habits, a vibration of intentional mutual benefit. And I can see how doing your best and living your purpose is an expansion on the first two habits, help others and you count. Doing your best is doing your best to use your God-given talents to enhance life on the planet. Uh, so Elaine, I, I know that the, the 12 Habits program as practiced in schools has had an impact on bullying and othering. How has practicing doing your best made a difference in this regard in your experience? Where schools are concerned, Steve, um, the shadow side of competition is bullying. And I'm at least old enough to remember 1999 when the first big, we're in Littleton, Colorado, where a big shooting occurred, several kids um, shot a number of their cl classmates back in Littleton. And it was because these kids were outcasts and were bullied by the other kids. 
And as time has gone on, that was a long time ago, you know, more than 20 years ago. But bullying is the negative aspect that comes out when people don't feel good about themselves. So they have to put other people down. What's happened in society today is with the advent of social media and the abilities of so many people to express themselves on on electronic media, on Facebook and the different the different social media sites. Now bullying isn't really is no longer just contained to schools. Um, bullying, violence, you know these these terrible aspects have not lessened since we tried to do something about it in 1999 when we first realized it was happening in Littleton, but it's gotten worse and it seeped its way into all levels of society. And I think that, you know, getting back to doing your best and understanding that excellence has morals, excellence has values, and excellence is about harmony and getting along together. And that together, and only together, can we uplift this world save our planet and that's what excellence is in reality thanks for clarifying that elaine and i would add that uh, if we look at our political scene these days there seems to be a lot of bullying and othering going on and the focus is about on how horrible the other guys are rather than what we have to offer so it's not so much about uh, creating the greater good together it's about focusing on vote for us because we're the lesser evil. So that seems to be the exact opposite of excellence, seems to be uh, institutionalized mediocrity disguised as a battlefield. So again, it's a way to do your best really uh, and seek the higher ground, regain the higher ground, is to live the golden rule in this golden month. So we want to reiterate that because there is no what I would call sane and sacred center that embodies the principles of all religious and spiritual and secular ethical paths. Politics has devolved into this kind of battlefield that gets us nowhere that is mutually destructive. So I want to reiterate that part of doing our best is doing our best to humanize other people and in the process humanize ourselves. So finally, Elaine, is there anything else you'd like to add to do your best? Well, let, let me summarize here a little bit. I mean, if we want the golden rule to rule, <laughs> then we need a golden rule of responsibility. You know, we need to take on the role ourselves personally of being responsible people for our lives. And that even though this month, September, is the month to do your best, all 12 of the of the aspects of the 12 habits of unity are feeding in to each person's ability to be a whole person able to be a contributor to society able to be in touch with their connections to the universe able to understand that 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 universal spiraling spiraling energy and love is harmony and that getting along together is what's been asked of us all along i mean if you have any doubt at all just look at how harmony spirals itself in nature. You know, nature doesn't ask any questions. Nature doesn't get doesn't get out of sync. You know, nature isn't perfect, but it's spiraling along in harmony. It's always doing its best. And we are being asked to do the same thing when we listen to the wisdom that's coming from the universe. And that's the wisdom that's going to bring us to the point of doing our best, of being excellent an excellent part of the greater context of the planet that we live on. Thank you so much, Elaine. Thank you so much. You know, and keep in mind, we can't do our best without other people. So one of the questions to ask ourselves is, how can we help other people do their best? Now, I noticed something, keeping in mind that September's color is a word gold, I happen to know that the 12 Habits has won a number of golden awards. Let's. Let's detail those for us, please. Well, thank you for asking that question, Steve. Um, it's been going on for 30 years. I've mentioned a couple of things. Probably the earliest recognition we had was in 1993, when the 12 Habits 
were recognized by the London Institute for Social Inventions as a social invention. Uh, that was pretty cool. We got interviewed. Uh, there were articles written and uh, a lot of newspapers around the area carried the story. Then when the program was first introduced into our first school in Aliquippa, I think I mentioned that they, the state had what they call a violence-free youth award. Mm -hmm. And there were many schools in the state where there were, there were police, you know, had, police had to be in the schools and certainly Aliquippa was one of them. So after less than two years, just barely 18 months of the kids being immersed in the messaging of the 12 habits in that, in that school, that school won the Violence Free Youth Award, a $10,000 check. Actually, they won it twice. There was a school version and a community version. So the, the next year we went out into the community, the merchants got involved, um, other institutions in the town got involved. And so by the end, the second year, we won it for the uh, for the entire community. So that was the Violence Free Youth Award. Then Tom Ridge was the uh, governor of Pennsylvania. In 2002, we won the Peter, F we were a nominee for the Peter F. Drucker Award for innovation in nonprofits. And the Pittsburgh City Council named a 12 Habits Day, a special proclamation. And all of the people who were working on on the 12 Habits in the, the Rotary came, I think I mentioned in earlier episodes, the Rotary was one of the sponsors in all the schools around Pittsburgh. So we were invited to a city hall meeting. It happened to be during the month of Do Your Best, so we were all wearing uh, fuchsia, and, uh, or excuse me, during the month of, of a new count. So we were wearing, uh, we were wearing wild fuchsia. So we won a wonderful proclamation. Actually, there's probably seven or eight proclamations from different communities where we were active. We received a commendation from the Republic of Rwanda. And uh, I personally received the Paul Harris Fellowship Award for the work I did on behalf of Rotary in Rwanda. So there are quite a few awards and recognitions, not to mention the nine independent university-based studies that have been done over the 30 years, proving the efficacy of this model in schools and communities throughout the Midwest. Wow. <laughs> That's a lot. That's really a lot. I'm glad that people are getting some of the history of this, uh, of this work and how much impact it had and how much acknowledgement that's been given. So this month, the month of September, we invite you to do your best, to fully embody your purpose and apply it in the world. And then ask yourself, when have you helped another to help another? When have you helped someone so that they could help someone else? This is iteration. Multiply yourself, help others to help, and help others to do their best in all ways. It's very easy to find good help these days when we create it ourselves. Something else you can do this month is to become one of our peer participants. Join the uprising. Join the community of people practicing the 12 habits. Go to our website. Go to our Facebook page. Share your stories. Get some great ideas from other people. And again, be part of a coherent community and experiment. Join the uprising. The practice for this month Pick one area of your life where you'd like to do better or see better results. Without falling into shame or blame, identify what you think is the blocking force. Is there something you could do better that would bring better results? Is there a daily or weekly habit that would move the dial? Are you willing to do it? Then do it, and then assess the results.
Okay, pause, please. Hello, baby. <laughs> Good afternoon, Good morning, Kirk Griffith. <laughs> yes. Hello, baby. Good afternoon, Kirk Griffith. How can I help you? A few minutes later. Ah, uh, very good. Hold on, please. Steve, please answer your door. You have it. You have it delivered. Oh, oh, good. I delivered. Hold on. Oh, good. <laughs> okay, the gentleman will be right there. <laughs> 